Hi everybody. Uh, today I got another project I'm going to be working on. Uh, I've been thinking about this for a while, wanting to do something with the uh, steel that I got off of the multi hole uh, scrapping. And uh, I've uh, got some ideas and I'm just going to put some stuff down on pencil and paper and uh, try and sort it out a little bit more. And uh, I'm going to reposition the camera and let you follow me through that process. So let me show you a new tripod. This is actually a tripod I've had for quite a while that uh, I, I, I got to use with my laser level and uh, never occurred to me to use it for the camera but it's got a standard, uh, it's got a part, it's a quick release here and uh, what's nice is that part, the quick release is I've got it attached to the camera right now so I can take this on and off the tripod real easily and this is a much nicer tripod than what I was using. It's a lot sturdier, it's got quite a bit of adjustment, uh, it's dusty from being in the basement, um, but you know it's got the crank up so I can, I can get quite a bit of height with this. And uh, I am filming with the, new, uh, the newest camera. This is the, uh, the Bloggy HD by Sony and I don't remember what model this is exactly, but I've actually been filming with this for a while now so enough said about that. All right, so we got our coffee, we got our paper and our pencil. And uh, I've been thinking about this for a while now, and I've got ideas in my head. I also uh, occasionally would take a walk down and look at the pile of steel and the different components I have there because I want to try and use as much of the existing uh, condition and shape of the pieces that are there to minimize the amount of, of of welding and cutting that I'm going to end up having to do and also um, just because of the sheer strength that's afforded by say like a box shaped uh, part as opposed to me taking flat pieces of steel and welding them together to make a box shape uh, you know my welding skills are uh, beginner at best or, or amateur at best so anyways I've got a couple of things I actually want to make, but the thing I want to work on today is I actually want to make something equivalent to like a boom pole. Um, boom pole is typically attached to a three-point hitch on a tractor, and it's just a, a long extending pole that is used for, for lifting things. And they typically are light enough to, to be able to maneuver around fairly easily when they're off the machine, um, but still sturdy enough to be able to lift pretty heavy loads. What I'm thinking of is something that's going to be more, uh, that's going to be stronger, and I want to be able to put it on the front end loader of the Oliver. The Oliver front end loader's got quite a bit of strength, and um, essentially I want something that I can maybe hook a chain fall on, and by virtue of having it extend out from the loader, have it uh, be able to be raised up high in the air, and it's going to become, I think, really useful. It would have been really handy to have that when I was um, moving the Hendy lathe down the bulkhead stairs. Um, I might have been able to eliminate even having that mishap completely if I had had, had a way to do that. Um, but anyways, that's water under the bridge. Can't do anything about that. So I'm going to just uh, sketch out a couple of things and, and then I'll show you. Okay, so we start with basically, there's my loader. You can see the front bucket and up, uh, up here is the, uh, the cylinder. And then there's the arm and then the, there's the loader itself, uh, the bucket itself. And uh, so now I'm gonna show you how I'm thinking I'm going to attach that because there's a few ways to attach these kind of uh, these things. One of the way would be you remove the bucket and actually attach something right to the, uh, the arms, that the loader arms. But that bucket does not come off easily. It's not a quick detach or anything like that. So I don't plan on doing anything uh, like that. Uh, another way is to use chains wrapped around the bucket and um, those cinching or snap type locking, uh, I forget what they call those things. But anyways, uh, the binders that, that uh, you basically, you know, you adjust the chain to the just the right length so that when you flip those levers on the binders, it, it tightens right around the bucket. Um, that's one way of doing, doing it, but what I don't like about that is, um, that chain ends up, the two chains, typically you'll have two chains doing that, and, and they kind of interfere with anything that wants to go into the bucket. And what I want is, I want some, I want my 
my boom pole to extend out of the bucket. Um, I guess the change with the boom pole wouldn't make a big difference, but one of the other projects I want to do is a, a set of like something along the lines of like pallet forks. Uh, so I wouldn't use the change for that, and I just got a better idea, I think, for this. So we start with, I'm going to cut out a section of the loader arm uh, that's going to be, uh, you know, from the multi-hole loader arm. It's going to be just basically a big box shaped piece of steel that, that uh, starts wide at one end and tapers down. And then what I'm going to do here on the wide end is I'm going to cut out a slot. So I'm going to slot the end so that I'll be able to actually slide that right on, slide that right onto the bucket. So once it's slid on, it's going to look something like that from the side view. And then I'm going to have to figure out a way to actually keep that thing from moving around. So my idea there is to be uh, is to mount a couple of angle plates um, on the sides of the uh, part. Actually, I've got that <laughs> I've got that actually in the wrong position. That's going to be uh, this this part is going to be on the bottom of the bucket under the lip of the bucket. So. I actually want this angle plate up on this top here but the angle plate will be up on the top here and then same thing my side view is incorrect here so this would be looking at it from the back of the boom going out from the uh, from the bucket so what's going to end up happening is these angle plates will be welded to the sides of the box and the uh, bottoms of the plates will be sitting on the bucket and I'm thinking maybe I'll drill and tap holes and put some large bolts in there and basically use the bolts as you tighten the bolts it'll act to clamp down on the inside of the bucket um, you know I'll, I'll fine tune that as I go along a lot of this is you know just conceptual for right now then I've got a smaller component from the loader arms uh, this is also a boxed piece of steel but it's much smaller and it's got a hole at each end and that will actually be able to fit into the end of this box so the idea is that I plan on having this inside of this box hanging out and then my thinking is initially I'll probably just put one hole um, because at the end of this component there's already a hole there that a pin went through so I'm thinking if I can utilize that hole what I can do is I can actually have this sit inside of here, have holes in this that the, the pin will go through and go, then go through that hole and, and basically that'll lock this in. And then at a later time if I need it, I can actually add more holes and actually kind of just like the, the Harbor Freight Cherry Picker that I use, have the ability to telescope this in and out depending on the load that I want to lift. You know, uh, have it further in for heavier loads and further out for lighter loads. So here in this picture you can see that I now have the, uh, the arm in and there would be the pin that would go through and basically hold this arm into this. And what that does for me is a couple of things. Um, but the, the main reason I want to do it this way is because if I just take this and weld it say to the top here, uh, the strength is limited to the strength of the welds. With this design, really the holding strength is limited to the structural um, holding strength of the steel itself and mainly your weak point is actually going to be this two or three inch steel pin that's going to go in here. I think it's a two inch pin, a uh, solid steel pin. So this is going to be a, a darn strong uh, lifting boom, I think. Alright, so that's it for now. I'm going to uh, finish my coffee here and then we're going to get set up. It's a really nice day today. I took some time off to make sure that uh, the wife and the kids aren't around and I can work on this without being uh, disturbed and hopefully things will go fairly well. So we're going to get the plasma cutter out and if all goes well, we're going to have time to get the arc welder out and weld this all up. You know, I've been using the uh, 1080p 30 frame per second resolution on this camera 
for a, a while now and every time I would go to use the zoom feature it would say it, it's not available so I finally got around to looking at the manual this morning and found out that unfortunately one of the limitations of this camera is that in 1080p um, 30 frames per second uh, you can't use the zoom function so I am now changed to 720 60 frames per second so I can now zoom so I think I'm going to use that from here on out. Oh, so anyways, the reason why I'm looking at the bulkhead here, give you an idea of what, those of you who haven't seen my other videos, what I'm dealing with when I got heavy things to go in and out of the basement. There's the, uh, there's the mighty SIP drill press base. All primed up, ready for paint. And I'm going to want to be able to move some of the heavy components of that. Maybe if I've got anything down there that's going to be painted, if I can get it out of there a lot easier, I might take it out here and paint it out here to avoid the problem with fumes and everything. There's the uh, the mighty Vernon lathe sitting under a tarp over there. Gonna need the uh, gonna need the uh, uh, the help of that. Uh, I've, oh, by the way, I've decided I'm now dubbing this the mini crane project. <laughs> uh, I don't think boom pole really gives it uh, is gonna really uh, uh, serve it as far as a name goes so we're gonna call this the mini crane in there in the tent we get the headstock for the Vernon that's a heavy beast the big support arm for the overhead gearbox and everything for that crane that's a heavy son of a gun gonna be a real piece of cake to maneuver around I'm gonna be able to reach into that tent where the loader almost fills the whole front of that thing and makes it kinda of hard to maneuver I'll be able to reach into the tent with the boom I'm sorry mini crane <laughs> and uh, hook up the parts like that. Sitting under that uh, couple of tarps there, much to, probably flash rusting, much to my chagrin, is the, uh, the Wells Index Mill. The only way that's gonna get down into the basement shop is gonna be through disassembly, so I'm gonna have to take the, uh, the, the, the head and the ram and all of that off of that thing, and probably the knee, and again, that's gonna be a lot easier with the mini crane. Update on the multi-host scrapping situation. Uh, we had a, a very busy weekend. This past weekend I had a couple individuals come in. Uh, both gentlemen uh, were from New York, different parts of New York State. They didn't know each other, but um, we timed it so that they were both able to come here on the same day and relieve me of several of the items that they wanted. Uh, I'm going to say hi to Walt at this point because I know he uh, checks in on these videos from time to time. And I uh, want to thank him for uh, making that drive in and completing a deal we talked about over a year ago. Uh, so he took all of the hydraulic cylinders except for the uh, front steering cylinder and the two swing cylinders because uh, those are going to be uh, more of a pain for me to get out. So, But he took all of the cylinders for the loader and all the cylinders off the backhoe. And uh, he took the uh, two cylinders for the stabilizers and he took all four wheels because the front tires were in good shape fairly new and I had one rear one of the rear tires was in great shape and the other one was holding air so he just took all of the wheels and all the hydraulic cylinders and uh, so he's he's happy I'm happy and that's why the mighty multi ho is starting to look pretty shabby these days <laughs> and of course I've already cut all the loader arms and everything off um, and then the other gentleman came by, he was buying some of the smaller parts, I, I was able to sell him some, um, I think I sold him, he needed one of the large pins for, I think, where the base of the boom actually attaches to the, uh, yeah, that, uh, that pin that went there, he took that one off my hands, and he needed the, uh, what went right there was the cushioning valve for the backhoe, he needed that. And uh, what else did he take? Did he take the power steering? No, Walt, uh, Walt bought the power steering pump. The main hydraulic pump is still in there. That's kind of stuck underneath it. That's, without taking that reservoir out, that's really tough to get that out of there. So that's gonna be at a later date. It's amazing to me. I went to move this thing after they left and it's amazing to me how heavy this thing still is. Uh, it's that rear end and that transmission are the bulk of the weight that's left. So uh, I think at some point we're going to drop this rear end off of this thing and see if we can't get any buyers for that. And uh, then maybe I'll be able to drag this thing out of here. 
I will say this, at least I've got a <laughs> pretty nice tarp. Uh, that's actually the, uh, the shelter logic uh, shelter that caved in from the bad snow uh, a couple years ago before I replaced it with the new shelter logic one, which has much higher arch. Anyways, uh, I kept this because it's actually, you know, a pretty good quality tight woven tarp. So it's pretty waterproof. I'm feeling pretty good about the chances of that not having gotten wet. But just condensation alone is going to be an issue. And I think I actually got another tarp underneath here. I think I double tarped this. You can see we've had some rain and, uh, you know, that standing water, that's obviously with mosquito season upon us. That's not a good idea, so we'll get rid of that. 